Hi everyone. Uh, you, I, you won't see my head because I've got the camera facing down. Um, but today we're going to do some uh, intense pencils um, and blocks because they come in two types of formats. And also we're going to use it on fabric. Now, uh, I'm just grabbing my glasses. Um, just when I paint, I need my glasses. Um, I have painted on already and let it dry in this flower here, the leaves and that flower there. Okay, so I've got fabric medium on there already. A little bit of hair on there. That'll just add texture. So this is a fabric medium. It's obviously back to front. It's a Matisse fabric fixative. Um, or you can also use a Derivan. They're both $23. They last for a long, long time. Um, a Derivan, I have both those in stock at the moment. So um, fabric fixative is what I like to use if I'm doing the ink tents. I also like to have, and I've come unprepared, of course. Um, give me a second. Sorry about that. I also like to have my $2.00. Oh, you know 50 cent brushes so hi Karen hi Chris hey going so I like to have a flat and a round um, and normally I just pick a, a medium to small one um, I get them from anywhere that I can um, they're not designed to keep <laughs> they're designed to use and throw away um, they're pretty much kids stock um, great for workshops and things like that because you know people can take them away and they can use them again for a couple more times before they have to buy their own however cuppa and housework can't wait <laughs> well you can sit down and relax and just watch away and uh, listen to how I use the ink tents pencils and blocks now they come in obviously a pencil format and that's them there. Obviously, it'll be back to front. Called Intex, Intense uh, Pencils by Derwent. Um, my long hair, got it tied up today. And also in a block. So the blocks are like that. Okay. Um, and that's a big pack of them, 72. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use every colour, so I've got a red rose and green leaves, so I'm going to sort of stick into those tones. Now, the other thing you'll notice, especially in this blocks one, is that we've got little water wells. Um, they're there for a reason. They're there to use a little bit like watercolour. Um, the more water you add to ink tents, the uh, more... Uh, diluted the color will be so <clears throat> the first thing you're going to do is just dip it into water dip your brush in don't have it too wet just take the extra water off this has got little hairs on it because it's new come on and it's a little bit more water and I've got to find a color now when I find it when I'm looking at colors I'm going to use the blocks first when I look at colours, I just paint one and you'll see the colour change. You can see it. And I just grab, and if you can see on the end of my brush, I've got a little bit of paint. A little bit more water, just to soften up that block. I don't even take them out unless, you know, sometimes I might, but very rarely I take them out. Okay, so I just get that. And I start to add and this will give me quite um, a soft but denser colour so I put a little bit on the actual piece and then I just wet the brush again and you'll see it turn to like a watercolour so you can see how it's turning into a watercolour there so I'm going only up to the edges and because I've got that fabric medium in there um, it won't actually run um, and go everywhere like uh, 
it would if I didn't use the fabric medium. So I'm just softening it, just so a nice soft colour. And down the bottom there, I want to get the red pencil. You can see the red pencil, and I just sharpen them with a blade rather than a pencil um, sharpener. I'm just going to dip the edge of it in a little bit of water just to activate it. And I'm going to get the pencil and just give it a denser colour in here in the base, just where I want it to look a little bit deeper in the, color, in the um, flower. Okay, so I'm just colouring in there. You can see how dense it is. Then I'll grab the brush again, take the excess water out of it. So I'm using a, a um, paper towel. And I'm just going to, and that's a little bit long, that brush, just going to massage it in a little, just to smooth it out so I don't have a definite edge. Just smooth. Um, I don't want to over-wet it because what it'll do is it'll um, wet the, the, um, the uh, fabric medium and the fabric medium will re... Hey, girl. Hey. Hi, hi Jill. Yes, Regina, you made it. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm starting with these these here. So the denser I want the colour, the more I put it on. I can also start with just the pencil and colour in that area that I want really dark. Just colour that area in. So just these areas here. Okay. I might use the round brush just because it's not as floppy. A little bit of water and don't go overboard and just gently massage it in. Now, oh, my glasses are starting to fog up. And now it looks blurry. <laughs> so I'm just slowly blending that in, a little bit at a time. Taking the excess water off as I go because I don't want to flood the fabric I don't want it to go out everywhere um, anywhere I touch with that brush that that intense is going to go okay so it's just a heads up okay so I can see I just need to a little bit more pencil on there just sort of blending it through and I need a little bit more pencil now it's a little bit wet the pencil will sort of work um, more like a paint and you just massage it to smooth it out I don't really want that sort of scruffy look I, I want it to be nice and smooth like a paint um, and I'm going to get a pair of scissors. I'm just going to cut this one short because I like a shorter thing. Um, hi, Patty. Uh, thank you. Uh, just jumped on. What are those pencils you're using? Sue, these are called Inktense pencils. They're from Derwent. Um, they're not cheap but they are brilliant, especially in um, textile arts, any kind of painting you wanna do. So I've just cut that a lot shorter. So I've got a little bit more control over it because the longer the actual end of it is, the less control I have. So I wanna get up close to those stitches. Um, and you can see, I was going to finish this off last night and do all sorts of wonderful things. But after I got offline from you guys, I pretty much crashed and burned. <laughs> so I'm just blending it through, making it look as natural as possible. You can see, see there? Um, hi, Judy, how you going? So for fabrics, yeah, fabrics or um, you can use them on paper as well, like a watercolor. And they also come in a block format. Okay, so they're called ink tense pencils or blocks. You'll find them um, online, but just research your pricing because some places overcharge. Um, 
but you'll also find them at your art store as well because they are quite a common, they're not a common, but a popular, more of a popular um, medium to use for painting. Okay, so I'm just getting right up into those little grooves where I wanted it to be in between those stitches. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one. So I'm just doing literally one petal at a time. I am, I'm not rushing. I'm just going to grab another brush and trim it down. And you'll notice I'm going to trim it down on an angle. Got little hairs going everywhere. It won't be perfect, but it'll do what I want it to do. And yes, they're my fabric scissors. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. All right, so that's sort of given me a bit of a pointier edge. And I'll show you why. And this is why we buy cheapies. Um, I only use um, probably more expensive um, brushes on um, canvas. Are the blocks similar to pastels? No, no. Uh, well, they look similar, but they're not like a, they don't work like a pastel. So, if I, if I can pick them up and draw if I wanted to, but if I'm wanting to get colour off it, I will actually paint in the block like that. It's a little bit richer in colour when you use the blocks, and you'll see how rich it is in colour. All right, and where's the other one? So rather than adding more paint, I'm just going to blend that out with a little bit of a damp brush and it's not soaking wet, it's just damp. For those who joined in late, I have painted this fabric beforehand with a fabric medium. Using your good sewing scissors. Yes, I did. My oath. <laughs> That's okay. That tiny little bit won't hurt them. My fabric scissors are my best friend. I take them everywhere. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the temptation in shadowing with these is also, the temptation is to put a black. Um, black is a very, very stark shade so I would be more inclined to get a really deep purple um, I'm just taking a bit of the red out of that brush I like this flat one that I, sh I um, pinched and I'll show you the color I'm going to use it's this one here and it looks sort of black on the screen but it's definitely not it's like a it's almost like a gray browny sort of color and I will just touch that in the areas and it's just a touch and then I'm going to blend it because you'll see that it's quite um, stark so you can see how it's quite stark so I'm going to wash that brush out and clean it get a little bit of dampness on the brush but not much because I don't want that color if I go and put too much water or you know too much coloring and it's going to turn it to mud and, and I don't want it to look muddy okay so I'm just putting it in the areas where I think that there might be more shadow or darkness in the base of things so if I find that it's too much I'll come along with a damp brush and move it backwards so I'll come into it from this direction and push it back okay so that is the petal so far and you can see how can you just paint on fabric without the medium yeah you can Regina but what happens is that because it's got water in it you're using a water or you add a water to it to, to activate it it'll bleed like a watercolor Okay, so it'll just grab into the fibers and just and just bleed away. So I'm going to utilize this dark color a little bit more. 
And I'm going to put some in here. Probably need a fraction bit more water. Grabbing that dark colour. A little, it's like a almost like a plum. And just put that in there. Because some of these insert inserted pieces, yeah, it is like a plum. Just need that little bit of darkness in there. Like that. You can see. Now what I'm gonna do is get my pencil and you can dip it in water, okay, to activate it and have it wet as you're painting. I'm just going to put a little bit of red into that purple. It's only a little bit, like that. You can see it's just starting to activate. And then I'm going to blend. Now, I'm just pushing that fa that fabric that uh, paint just out to the edges, just for now. I'm dipping my brush into water, but I'm not dipping any further than the end of the brush. So that really fine tip of the brush. Um, and if you make a boo-boo, it's okay. We just add a new leaf <laughs> or rose petal. Okay, don't stress over it. It's no biggie. If you have too much water, it can go past the medium and create a, like it's starting to bleed here. So you can see it's starting to bleed in there. So I will probably come back with a bit of thread and fill that up. Okay, so that was too much water. What not to do on Michelle's patchwork. All right. Okay, so adding too much water, you can see, makes a difference. And it really will make it bleed. Okay, so that was too much water there. But I'll fix that in the stitching. So you've got to remember, not too much water. See that bleed? See how it's bleeding here? Um, have you ever tried using aloe vera gel? I watched a tutorial that used instead of water because it doesn't bleed. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can actually do that as well. Yep, it acts like a, a medium as well. So. All right, so that's one rose. How pretty is that? Um, and like I say, I'm just going to create another petal. I'm just going to create a couple of petals there. Or stitches just to fill it in. Um, hi there, I'm sorry I'm late. No worries, Pat, it's all good. Welcome. Uh, next one, the next rose is another red. So let's go to that one. Let's get our dark colour first. Let's work a little bit in the centre. Like I said, I want too much and I don't want too much water. Okay, and it is like a purple, like a plum. So just keep drying off your brush from excess. You don't want too much going on. Get your pencil and start filling in where you want to work. Get your brush. Clean it up. So when you dip your brush in the water, you shouldn't have water up the stem of the brush. It should only just be on the tips, okay? There you go. The other thing too is I might not have added enough medium there and that's why it's traveled so just remember that when you're putting your medium on it's hard to see because it, it, it dries clear so you can't quite see whether you've got it all um, but that's just um, another hint sometimes it's it might be uh, worthwhile putting a couple of layers of medium on so i'm just literally massaging these to get it into all the little grooves and then I'm going to come back with the pencil and 
and I'm going to get my, I think that's a blue, that'll do the job. And you can see that darker blue doing its thing. Now I don't have to blend that in, I can leave that quite like a line if I wanted to. Um, and like I say, the more you, you know, fiddle with it, I used aloe vera gel with um, inks and pens and still have them and use them, yeah. Oh no, Debbie, you haven't. You can always rewind. It's no no big deal. Um, I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna put these up on YouTube as well. So I dried. I just dried that brush, and I'm just massaging. But I'm not trying to overdo it because if I overdo it, it's just gonna look like mud. Okay. So it's starting to look like a mud at the moment. Next thing is the other way of doing it is to wet the actual area you're about to paint get your pencil color in and just color the dark areas you want to be dark the areas you want to be dark oh, that one's annoying me get out and then with a damp brush not soaking just massage it in to that area so that you get a, a nice blend of colour, okay? So I'm going to grab that dark one again. I want it to be underneath these areas. You can see how dark it is and a little bit of it in here. And then I'm going to grab the red and just a bit of colour there. Just a little damp brush. And you'll see it just start to, the colour comes away. Now I've got, got a blue and a red. That's going to make a purple. I don't want a purple. So I'm just cleaning my brush, then going to the red. Now I can get my red and give it a good colour in. And sometimes this is this is one of those things that sometimes you just have to experiment a little bit. Um, you know, don't do it on your, your grandma's heritage quilt. Do it on um, some sample calico and uh, have a play. Okay. Then I really only want a very, very light red up here. So I'm just going to touch the top part of that. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks for the info. Yeah, the muddy brown thing will happen very easily. And that's the top of it. So it needs to be lighter. It's got curled over. Then I go to this top of this one that's curled over also. I just want it nice and light. Just fraction a little bit more colour there along the top edge. Okay, that bit there can also be a little bit lighter. Sometimes you'll do these things too and you'll come back and go, oh, I should have done that a different colour. With Intense, you can't go back over it. Um, it'll only muddy it up and the fabric will only take so much colour before it cracks it and just goes, nope, not doing it. So that's the redder one. And I'm just going to put the slightest little tiny little dots along here. Tiniest little dots in the corners. And get that brush again. And I haven't dipped it. I'm just going to work that in a little just so it doesn't look like dots. Okay. Alright. Now this, this drawing was drawn in a pen, like a normal pen. So you'll see that that, that pen will slowly just blend into um, the piece. Um, the good thing about ink tents too is they don't really get all over you unless you start playing with them with your fingers. I'm just going to massage that out a little, a little bit dark in one area. 
blend it in. There we go. So you can see it's starting to take shape. Curls. Curtis says hello. Hi, Curtis. Office Works have the intense pencils. Oh, that's handy to know. Um, that's that's ladies. I get some of the. Thanks for that info. I might have to get some. Oh, these are so so much fun, and they're relaxing. There's no stress with these. You don't have to sort of go. Oh my God. I'm you know. It's not working, yada, yada, yada. It's play. It's playtime. This is this is adult playtime. <laughs> All right, so this outer ones, I want them a little bit darker in here. So I'm just going across there and I'm giving it a good scratch in. Okay, you can see it's quite, quite heavy. I've pushed hard. Now... I'm going to just wet that to activate and like watercolour you do have to act a little bit quickly so I'm going to get that blending it in nicely as close to the line as I can go without making a mess just up to the top there and there we go massage it around Okay, just a bit of dabbing just to get it into those um, threads, along between the threads. All right, okay, around the edges there, I am really just scratching. You know, that little pointy one that I, I made before. That will help getting into those little edges. The tiniest, tiniest, very tiny, very, very tiny. And just slowly massage that into those grooves. I wish you could see up closer. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Oh, that's my phone buzzing at me. Now, if you want a little highlight in it, like a little white bit, there's, there is white, but you'll find it won't work like a normal white. So if this one needs a sharpen, so if I put a white there, what it'll do is it'll turn it pink. So it won't actually add white to it. Like watercolour, to get a white, you need to leave it un, un, um, touched. Okay, so see how it's turned it pink and there's a hair in there and a bear as well. Okay, and that just lightens up that, that area. So you see how that's starting to take shape. Now, I've got all the highlights in there. I need to add a couple of these and I'm really not overdoing it. I'm just putting a couple of gentle lines in there give it the illusion I know, can you see those I'm dampening my brush and I mean dampen I just take the excess water off and just brush over them outwards like away from the center like that to make them activate so can you see those lines I don't know if you can see it is the paint luminaire no honey this is um this is intense pencils and blocks Debbie um, they're designed to work on fabric and paper. It's very similar to watercolour. All right. Um, so the next one, I'm going to do it a different way, just so I can show you different techniques. I'm going to wet it first. And I've still got some um, red in my brush. So wet it first. All right. And get the pencil and you'll see look at it it really comes up in color now look at that yeah then grab my brush brush take all the excess water out and just massage there's a little circular motions 
Now, if you see excess water in it and you don't want it there, dab it out like that. See how it just took it all out? If it's got too much water in, um, you're going to get that bleeding thing. I'd rather have less water than more, that's for sure. So I'm just massaging that colour just like that. And I'm coming close to the edge of my stitching on the first run, but not onto it. Then I grab the brush again, dip it in. You can see it's starting to bleed a little over here, which means I haven't got enough stuff in there. And I'm just going to maneuver it up to the edges of that thread very very gentle okay and down here now if I want to add some brighter areas in I can darker areas I should say but again, dip your brush in, take the excess paint out and just soften what you've just painted or drawn on, I should say. All right, so that just created a little bit of a, um, like a fold. Now I'm going to get this one and I'm literally going to do tiny little flicks, just up like that. This one here needs a bit of red on there. The one next to it, I need to make that a little bit darker. Then I get my brush. I've dipped and then, then uh, taken off the excess. Done it again, just so I can flick the the, the damp brush over the top of that drawn bit, the darker bit, and just dab away a tiny amount of water. And it is just literally an activation. So that's the next one. Okay, so you can see it's a bit darker than that one, so I might change them and add a little bit more of the blue to this one here, just so they look very similar. And uh, the other thing too with ink tense pencils, they'll only the fabric will only take so much of it, and then it won't take any more. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next ones. All right, this one here is a highlight, so I'm going to keep that one um, lighter. But I'm going to just colour that in like I did the other one. This one needs more red in it. It's got too much dark in it. And another bit of a scrub across. Get my brush and slowly walk beautiful. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks, Lynette. And get my brush and slowly, slowly, very gentle, just manipulate it. We don't want it flowing over, but we don't want the brush so wet that it's dripping. I mean, there's not one bit of water on the edge of my brush. The only bit of water I'm getting in it, when I take it out, I dry it off, and it's like a damp brush. And I'm literally just massaging it into the fabric as I go. And that just helps um, keep the flow of it under control. Some of the girls suggested there before uh, aloe vera gel. You can use that as well. Um, I haven't used it yet. I have seen or heard people using it. Um, I just get water. It doesn't cost me anything. <laughs> so <laughs> cheapskate, aren't I? 
Okay, so I'm just giving that a little bit of more depth at the base. You can see there. Back and forth from the water bowl, by the way. Constantly back and forth. You don't need a lot of water in your water bowl. I just keep it really low. All right, so that one there. Then, you know, I can try again with the white, see if I can get some pink into it but it's not really going to it's really just um, a pretend color that white all right so now I'm going to get the, the it's like a deep blue it's not black at all and I'm just going to draw some little lines just to give it that look of curling up and I need to come underneath here where the curl is to give it the look that it's coming over is there a fixative dry or wet um, it, it is a dry I've, I've put it on wet obviously and then I've dried it uh, you can use it wet a um, little bit less control though and I do have control issues when it comes to these things I like to know what it's going to do um, and I find that if I if I do a class with it um, some people can't quite cope with it running everywhere so the fabric medium on it before you uh, start working it does tend to reduce the stress levels for people bit of a highlight a natural highlight it's worth there so those are lines I'm just dampening the brush and I'm brushing over the top of them just to give them that um, I don't know it just softens them a little this one here I just put a little bit of red on it wash out that dark color And again, because it's a small area, just a very small amount of water. We don't want it to bleed everywhere. And just dampen that, uh, sorry, brush that out very softly so it's very light. Can you see that? Um, I don't think I even went up to the edges there. I can always touch it up later if I need be. Um, but I think less is more sometimes with these things. Um, I'm going to dip my pencil in again and show you this way. So again, you can see it's a lot richer when it's wet and added onto the fabric. Okay, can you see how rich that is compared to drawing it on dry? So I've just done that there, grab my brush and I don't colour in the whole thing because I want to blend it in. You can see it smooths out, it's just beautiful stuff to use. I've added a little bit of water in this one so I could have issues of bleeding but I'll deal with it as it comes. So you notice I haven't gone right up to the edge. So I've got a clean brush. I'm going to dip it just the tiniest little bit. There's like just the edges of it. And I'm just going to smooth it and work it. I'm going to turn it around so I can work into it and work it that way. Work it away from me. Okay, push, push, push. Just gently. And I come up very, very close to those those um, stitches. But I try not to over go over the stitches if I can. And I like to, if you notice, I like to turn my work so it's in a position that I can work away from it. So a lot of smoothing. 
manipulating. Okay, it's a funny shape petal that one. Um, and then I've got my dark blue and I'm just doing little lines of flicking lines. Bit of a dark spot here and there. Clean brush, damp brush, not wet. And just smooth over those lines I've just drawn and blend in those little shadows. Again, not too much water or you'll create mud. Okay. I can see that there's a couple of petals in here that need to be a little bit darker. You can see it dries lighter than what I'm putting it on. So um, I'll come back to those in a minute. Bit of a scribble in there. And a brush. So I just scribble away. Get my brush, dry off the excess. And you'll see how it just slowly turns into a paint. Cool, isn't it? Look at that. Beautiful colour. Nice and rich. But again, just work your paint up to close to the edge of the, the stitches and allow for that incidental running of the, the fluid of the water and the paint. Okay. If it's too wet it'll make an absolute bleeding mess and I mean bleeding <laughs> All right. a nice dry brush blend it into those little little tiny bits and only with a very dry brush you're just manipulating you're thinning it out basically um, Tiny little bit more water, just a little. So if you ever want to test out this stuff and you don't want to use fabric, you can always test it on paper, but paper and fabric do react a little bit differently, but not a lot different. So um, this one here, I'm gonna do the lines like that. Little flicks, see the little flicks. Get my brush, clean it out, dry it off, and run the brush over it, a damp brush over it, and it'll just activate the colours. I'm just going to come back in here and do little dots in here just to give it a bit of shadowing. Same with the one next to it I just did. I missed out on doing that before. And now, and this is what I say, you'll, you'll touch up and redo them, um, but be wary of adding too much um, of, the of the paint. Um, it can, when you uh, wash it, um, it can come off if uh, you put too much on and the fabric just won't take it if you know what i mean okay i'm just making it a little bit deeper in red there and there's a couple of spots i can see like in here um, in there need to be a darker same with that one that's underneath the petal and I'm just gonna come in and do them again remembering it'll only take so much paint just to touch them up
All right, so that's one rose. Thank you, Karen. That's two roses, sorry, that's two done. This one bled a little, and I'm going to fix that. Um, I'll show you how to fix that later. Now I'm going to do the green. So I won't touch that now until it dries completely um, because uh, I want to make sure I know what colour it is uh, before I go. And I think I think if I was to try to add any more on, any more colour, I don't think it would actually take it. I think it would probably go, no, nah, I can't do it. All right, so now I've got these leaves, the green, so I'm going to pop away my red pencil and pick up a green. Now, I like the light limey green, and yes, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a bit of yellow, and I'm also going to use a really, really dark Colour is that one? Oh, that says ink black. I don't want black. Uh, outliner. Don't know what that is. It says outliner. What's that one? Bark. It's like a brown. Let's try the brown. What pencils are you using? Karen, I'm using ink tense pencils and the blocks. So I'm using a combination of the two. They're the same product but a different format. Um, and they, they work beautifully on fabric, really, really nice, and get that lovely watercolour mark um, look to them. Um, so I'm going to dip this pencil in the water. I've already, like I've said before, I've already put the stabiliser on, uh, stabiliser, the um, medium on, and you can see where the water is. Um, because it goes really nice like a paint when it hasn't got water it goes like I don't know like a scratchy pencil can you see the difference so once you run out of water you need to dip it back in again so I'm doing the higher points here there's, uh, there's some high points uh, that aren't that are sitting up higher sorry on the stitching then I'm going to get the yellow, I'm going to dip it in, just want to test it first. Yep, all good. I don't want it to take over, but I want it to lighten. So rather than use a white, I would use a yellow with a green to lighten a leaf. Okay. Now... I'm just lightening around the edges there with the yellow, just a little bit scratching. Now, what I'm also going to do is get this bark colour and I'm just going to touch up in there and under there. Um, I didn't see the start. Did you draw the roses or use a transfer pencil? Looks great, Lynette. Um, this was already drawn on by, um, it's one of my designs from uh, Candy's Garden that will be coming out as a block of the month. So mum drew it on from one of my drawings, um, just tracing it. Um, and then she drew over the top of it because she couldn't see it with a pen. Didn't realise she used a pen. I said, that's okay, we'll just do another one. But um, I ha she gave this back to me and I thought, what am I going to do with this? So I thought, well, I'm going to have to paint it if I need it to look like anything. Otherwise, um, you're going to always see that pen mark. So painting it is. <laughs> so that's been drawn on with an actual pen. Um, hence the reason why you can see that dark blue line so I'm cleaning I've done that little bit of brown and you can see I've just just tiniest little bit of water just to um, soften the line okay now I've cleaned my brush and I'm going into the yellow and I've got a damp brush not a wet brush and I'm just massaging it very gently into the edges and the green so that's my leaf okay the other way of doing it too is you can start with yellow so with these you would start with your lighter color so you can put your yellow in that in the 
the center of the the leaf if you wanted to like that get your lime green or whatever green you decide to use and touch up next to it and around it and then get your paintbrush and start blending so there it is there and I've taken the majority of the water off so Lynette these these paints are activated with water or fluid of any kind um, so you'll see by putting the yellow first it changes the color of the uh, the leaf so it's a lot lighter in color you see how light it is so I'm dipping the end of my paintbrush in for those who've just joined in not the whole paintbrush and I'm taking off excess water so that I don't have it running like a watercolor and bleeding everywhere um, I've used a fabric fixative yes it is washable um, uh, we like to paint on dresses. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely washable. Um, it's heat set. And um, yeah, fabulous. It'd be great on dresses. Absolutely. So once it's on and heat set, that is it. Regina, I think I made a decision on seeing machines. My embroidery machine died with the needle down in the fabric. Oh, I'm calling a banana deal on Monday. He repairs machines, but I need a new embroidery machine. See more. Hang on. I don't know if it'll let me. Embroidery machine. Yeah, well, I mean, you like the bananas. So I was going to suggest if you, you know, go with what you know and like. Um, but the embroidery dealer will... Well, absolutely. I mean, Benina dealer will know how to handle it. All right, so that's just a very small brown pencil, uh, line of pencil. You can see it's very small. Just a little bit of a highlight, uh, low light, I should say. Dampen the brush and wipe off the excess paint and then just massage that in. But don't create mud. <laughs> it's very hard not to especially when you're learning but you'll you'll understand what I mean when you you know when you're doing them and then all of a sudden it looks like mud okay so there's another leaf um, done I'm just gonna put a darker spot up here just a little bit there all right so um, I'm going to get my paintbrush now and I'm going to use a, a different color, but I'm using these blocks. Okay, so I'm going to dip it in. And you can see it's like a, a yellowy, really limey, limey color. A little bit more paint, uh, water, sorry. Okay, and I'm painting it in there. So you can see it's there. And the paint's on the paintbrush. And I'm going to just give these that really limey, color they're a little bit different to the other leaves all right does it paint on all types of fabric um that's a good question um not too sure on that you'd have to uh test it out I would say some fabrics wouldn't absorb it. It's not paint but ink. Yes, in, yes, that's exactly right, Caroline. You can use them on watercolour paper. A hot press watercolour paper is best as smooth and cold press. But if you try to use normal paper, correct, it needs to be a watercolour paper, um, it will warp or kill and dig a hole. Correct, exactly right. You're all over it, Caroline. Um, I'm going to grab an olive green. Whoops, a daisy pencil and just give them their little bit of low light underneath but without um, putting too much in they're a fabulous pencil they really are um,
there you go so that's the, the leaves around the base of the rose see educated peanut in a peanut gallery <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's fine now look all the information the girls are, I'm, I'm sure they'd be happy to have all that information that's absolutely much appreciated so I'm going to do this leaf the same way as I did the first one which is color in the green through the center damp brush not drenched slowly manipulate it Nope, too much water. Naughty. Now, if you add too much water in, don't go up to the edges because <laughs> it will bleed past. Or quickly get your paper and blot it out, okay? All of the Derwent products are fabulous. Yeah, it does look 3D. Yeah, thank you. That's I was hoping it would look 3D. Um... Yeah, the Derwent, oh look, they're renowned for having, they've always had really good products all through all the years. Um, I've not come across a Derwent product that I haven't um, looked at and gone, wow, I want some of those. Hence the reason why you pay top dollar. Um, I'm just adding some yellow in because I've left some areas for yellow through the tips. Yeah. And, um, and look, you know, with any kind of art stuff, like full-blown art stuff, these are classed in the, you know, up there with the art items. Um, you get what you pay for. So um, they aren't cheap, but they are. Oh, look, I've had mine for years. <clears throat> they don't go off. Um, and they, they never let me down. They do the same thing each time I take them out. All right. So that one is about to have a little bit of the darker under here, and then here, under here, and then there. <clears throat> That's um, the highlights and lowlights, Lynette, of what actually, hi Louise, um, where, where is the best place to buy intense and how, how is it fixed? Okay, it's heat, a heat set. Um, the fixative I sell online, uh, fabric fixative. Um, look, to be completely honest with you, I went to Amazon because I couldn't find anywhere way back when I got them that would did have them that was reasonable. Um, but your art stores, your general art stores will have them. So you'll probably find that Cavalier um, would have them. But do research your pricing, okay? Um, just be careful that you're not buying something at an American price when it should be Australian price. So just double check, okay? Um, I'm just going to put a bit of a highlight there with the yellow and wash my brush out because it had some dark in it. And just give it a bit of a blend. All right, um, probably needs just a fraction more of that in there. Very gentle touch. All righty, so there you go. Officeworks, yes, someone said that before too. Officeworks sell them 119 for a set of 72. That's pretty good. Um, Caroline, uh, that's great. Yep. Um, thanks, Caroline, for the information. Yeah, good. Good. So, and you're able to buy them online. Um, try Office Works. You can order them online. Yeah, there you go. And collect. They are cheapest for ink tents. Well, there you go, Joe. That's fabulous. Thank you for the information. I don't sell them direct, um, personally, but I use them. And um, you can see how beautiful they work. Um, and it's not rocket science. It's just little bits at a time. Nothing too fancy. Are the block tents blocks intense as well yep so this will be back to front by the way just so you know because i've got it on selfie mode but they, they look like that except the right way around um and then you've got the pencils which will have 
that sort of look to them. I like both um, and I like to use both because I like to um, just try different things. So you can see I've gone a little bit too much heavy handed with the water and I'm going to fix that up with a bit of thread. Okay, and that could also be because when I've put the fixative on, I haven't put enough um, there to stop it from running. Uh, so again, like as long as you don't use too much water with them or you want to use a gel, um, then you will find. So thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So that's using um, ink Inktense blocks and pencils on fabric so i'm going to finish stitching this sometime in the next week <laughs> and finish painting it because now i've started i have to finish um, i did use those lovely glamour threads um, which i have on special to this week um, so you're more than welcome to order those i've got them on special from 13 dollars down to 10 dollars each thanks karen thanks debbie Appreciate it. Uh, really, really pretty, Michelle. Thank you, Jewel, uh, Judy. Sorry. Um, I can't even. There you go. <laughs> so there you are. So if you wanted to, um, you can just paint n not all of it. You could just paint part of it. You don't have to paint all of it. It's really up to you, isn't it? So thanks, Regina. Um, I will talk to you guys soon with another demo and uh, we'll chat in probably about maybe about an hour. So see you then, ladies. Did you fix the fabric first? Uh, I've put fabric fixative on it first, Karen. That's what I did first. Um, just on the areas I'm going to paint. Okay. To fix this to the fabric, it needs to be heat set and make sure you use a um a silicon mat not a silicon a um oh what are they called um oh what are they called those mats i always thanks i always learn a lot you're welcome bye caroline um talk to you guys soon uh i can't think of the name teflon teflon mats all right so make sure you use those first when you are ironing and no steam okay dry iron only because you don't want adding water to what you've got here because you'll ruin it all right ladies talk to you soon bye